What's up you Molan investors and money makers welcome back to the channel there was a swing day for Molan we saw Molan went to 18 cents and then it went to 22 cents take a look at uh, this particular um, chart right here we started the day with on a low note but then we went to high note of 22 cents and then we started settling down and we close we are closed at 19 cents 1.35 percent up all in all we saw Nasdaq was closed at 0.18 percent Dow Jones was closed at 0.62%. So it ended in green and Molen is green. What happened today with Molen? Number one, I wanted to tell you that the short sellers are still a uh, pretty strong 54.21% uh, short volume ratio. All in all, they returned the shares that we know. Um, also, the FINRA total volume 345 million with the short volume of 187 million. One thing that you want to know is they have filing, they have done the filing on July 10th, which was today. Um, the DEF 4 14A and other definitive proxy statement. I want to quickly take you through that and I'll share some of the gist of it. You don't really need to go through this. This is a large document, but I'll tell you what you need to look out for. We'll also look into what Molin is doing in terms of the buzz ratio and the participation ratio and the scoring on stock tweets. So you can get some of the idea around where Molin is heading. The upcoming days might not be the best day for Molin. It will be super volatile. It can go on the swing trade on the high side in 20s and in low side close to 16 and we may see tomorrow what will happen because there there is some of the some of the fundamental news coming up in regards to their august 3rd meeting that i want to cover before i go ahead i just want to tell you that if you can hit the like button subscribe to the channel that will be super super helpful turn on the notification bell because we are looking at some of the volatility in molen and i'll tell you why because what molen is sharing right here is uh, basically they filed this uh, uh, 14a def other definitive proxy statement and then we have seen the annual report uh, for the security holders as well um, in this particular uh, uh, proxy statement, what they have said is for the annual meeting of st stockholders to be held on August 3rd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. PST or Pacific Daylight Time. Right now, they're still a Delaware Corporation. They're moving to Maryland, as you already know. I covered in my previous video, but this proxy statement is furnished by Molen Automotive in connection with the annual meeting for stockholder that is, that is to be held on August 3rd, 2023. So you can expect to get some of the insights as to what the reverse stock split is going to look like on that date. Now also remember that before that we may not see the reverse stock split um, in Molen because many of you asked me what is going to happen with the reverse stock split and when we can expect. I do not see uh, it is happening uh, anytime soon because they don't have deficiency notice from compliance deficiency notice from NASDAQ at least uh, they did not announce it yet. They may or may not have it, but they will have sufficient time. So you decide how you want to vote for it. You want Molen to stay within Nasdaq. And if you do, we need to make sure that it goes above and beyond the $1 price point. Okay. Now, the second thing is if it becomes OTC stock, there will be some sort of impact um, in terms of the, the, the transparency and the filing, so on and so forth. One of the big challenge that Molen has at the moment is the trust issue. Right now, they announced this $25 million um, buyback program. And yes, we saw the spike, but then we started going downwards, right? So what happened was last week, we went to 32 cents, but within 32 cents, after 32 cents, we quickly got back 30% down. So all in all, yes, we are still up 71%, but in grand scheme of things, if you think about year to date, we are down massively 97%. Now, what you want to think about when you see this proxy statement, number one, they have uh, they have announced uh, some of the number of shares common stock uh, they have listed down here common stock is 643 million as you can see right here number of vote one vote per share so they will be uh, pe people will be exercising their vote rights and the, to decide what Molen wants to do number one they have the max the ceiling one to 100 that will be the main uh, agenda of the meeting or one of the main agenda of the meeting pretty important one series a preferred stock 1037 
thousand. So each share will have one thousand times voting rights. So one thousand per share will be the voting rights. So votes per share. So all in all, number of votes for one thousand and thirty-seven shares will be one point zero three million voting rights. And how it will impact, I'll tell you in a second. But Series C, that is preferred stock, which is one point two million, give or take. And number of votes will be 48,000 and change. Series D preferred stock that they have at the moment is 363,000, give or take, and it'll have one vote per share. So you want to consider that. Now, if you think about what uh, their CEO, David Mishuri, owns, right now it's the voting power for chief executive officer. As on the record date, David Mishuri, David Mishuri, our executive uh, officer, directly owns 4.5 million companies common, 4.5 million stocks of companies common stock. No economic interest in the unvested restricted stock unit awarded and other convertible securities. Based on this 643.3 million shares of companies common stock, which is outstanding on June 22nd, 2023, David has an economic interest in approximately 0.7% of the outstanding shares. So you want to know that he owns 0.7% or their, their interest is 0.7% within the company's common stock. In addition to connection with this business combination, uh, David Mishuri entered into the voting agreement with the certain holders of the company's securities and voting agreement to which the holders agreed to vote as directly by Mr. Mishuri and also granted an in irrevocable proxy at the annual and special meeting. So he'll be able to control some of the good portion as to what the, the decision making should be. As on the record date, Mr. Mishuri has the following shares over the vote, voting power pursuant to voting statement agreement. Approximately 191 million shares of common stock. So remember that part. Number two, 1037 Series A preferred stock. So you want to multiply this by 1000 in terms of the voting right. So what will be his voting right with the power of 1.037 million shares, right? He also has 48,000 and change common stock issuable upon the conversion of 1.2 million shares of Series C preferred stock and 363 and change in Series D. So all in all, um, he made sure that he has enough voting rights and I agree with his decision because he wants to drive the company and what exactly and where exactly they're going, so on and so forth. All in all, what we saw is precisely what I thought. We dropped down in terms of the volume. I was expecting close to 700 million in volume, but we did not go there. Instead of that, we went pretty close to 600 million, precisely 583 million in volume. We saw the swing from 22 cents and change to 17 cents and change right here. So pretty good swing, about five cents on a 17 cents is a little, little less than one third. So you can think about like 30 person swing all in all that we experienced today. We're closed at a little over 1940, uh, 19 or 1945. So yes, we closed above the price point that we saw yesterday. Um, so that's a good sign once again, but we may see some more volatility in terms of the buzz and sentiment. Let's take a look at stock tweets. We are at 1945. We're slightly bullish in, in terms of the sentiment score, which is good to see. Uh, in terms of uh, 15 minutes ago, we're slightly bullish. Uh, yesterday, we're slightly bearish. Of course, the price point again, why we're slightly bullish is pretty negligible difference 19, 1945. So, the, ba the based on the algorithm that works out on stock tweets, you may see some resistance in terms of uh, the sentiment score. By the way, message volume, again, slightly high. There's a ton going on, as I just mentioned to you, because they're holding this meeting on August 3rd. They have August 1st, we give or take. Don't quote me on that because I don't exactly know how it's going to work out, but they have August 1st week before they decide the reverse stock split. Now, you decide for yourself because many people have asked me questions, what should be the best outcome? I, In my personal opinion, staying on NASDAQ is the best outcome. Will the shorts go after Molin once again? Probably yes, but you want to get out of this uh, NASDAQ zone and go into OTC and have less transparency, less volatility, and less volume. Like, like volatility is a different part, but volume is pretty big, right? If you have lower volume, it hurts the stock price, especially the penny stock price, right? Now, if you are on NASDAQ, you have a lot of eyeballs. You can easily trade, easily buy and sell. You can do after hours, pre-market, so on and so forth. 
Not only that, you have international stockholders, people who are in um, outside of United States can also trade into these stocks, and that can really add value into the stock price. We have seen more the volume, better the price point, a lot of buzz and good PR. And the one of the thing, again, I want to tell you is, not that people don't really have super duper trust in Molin, but if they deliver what they are telling us on time, that will be super, super impactful. In other words, let's say if they say they have 22 vehicle and $300,000 revenue, it's okay. But when they say they have larger projection and they can sell A, B, and C, why do not we really see the revenue filing in, in the filing, right? We are looking for more and more revenue and also, they'll need to worry about what exactly they'll do to bring back the cash. Well, they, uh, another thing I wanted to also mention to you is this part, like buyback program. Now, when they're telling us that they'll be buying back stocks for up to $25 million, I think, yes, it's a great news. They should be doing that. But all in all, they are not in stock buying or stock trading business. They are in building cars. Also, they are struggling with cash. I'm not sure how they can buy 25, up to $25 million worth of stock. But again, time will say. But people, yes, there, is a, there was a hype and people understood that. And then the hype just went down. Now, if they start buying something, right, they might have some investors um, that uh, are interested. If they start buying this stock, yes, then, then it'll be a lot more tr confidence and trust within the from the community and that will help the stock price all in all. Also, they declared that they have approximately $235 million in cash and they can they can go up to certain level. They probably, they probably will struggle uh, beyond a couple of quarters in my opinion because they are burning 114.9 million at least based on what I see here. The net income is negative 114, right? So this 235 million can go a couple of quarter as I just uh, as I just told you. But there is a lot more to come from Molen and also from the investment community. One of the thing is they are also combating the naked short sellers. They are trying to identify illegal activities, market manipulation within the stock price. All this are positive news. A lot of positive news are coming up, including buyback program. Um, they are also looking to improve their um, short selling, whatever going on uh, in terms of the illegal activities, so on and so forth. So with all that, I wanted to tell you that there is a ton to come from Molen. So watch out, stay tuned. I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.